Okay, in mathematics, we never want to leave a square root answer in this form. So here we have the square root of 40. The correct way to simplify this number is this way, 2 times the square root of 10. So this would be considered wrong, and this would be considered right. But how do we go from here to here? So we're going to be talking about a very specific uh, skill that you need in order to deal with square roots, especially if you're taking a course like algebra. But if you know what the reason is, how we went from the square root of 40 to 2 times the square root of 10, put that into the comment section. Of course, I'm going to show you uh, what that reason is, and we're going to review exactly how to correctly write square roots. But uh, before we get going, uh, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. It really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. Now, just one other uh, uh, quick comment. We have the square root of 40. What we don't want to do is go into our calculator and get a decimal. Okay, so that's not what we're talking about. So put that calculator away. And let's go ahead and uh, just quickly uh, look at the reason why we can go from the square root of 40 uh, to 2 times the square root of 10. And that reason has to do with this very specific property of square roots. Okay, so when you study mathematics, especially algebra, uh, you know, dealing with square roots is a huge thing, but this symbol in math, this little, of course, you would uh, uh, say that this is a square root symbol, but technically this is what we call a radical in mathematics because I can do other things. Uh, for example, I can take the square root of four or I can take the cube root of eight. So this symbol here, same symbol, but I'm doing something other than the square root. So when you study um, mathematics, especially, again, in courses like algebra, you're going to study uh, chapters or units that are entitled um, radical equations, radical uh, expressions, the like. And what we're really talking about is dealing with this symbol. Okay, so this is uh, the first uh, kind of main idea uh, to simplify square roots. And this is a critical, okay? You never want to leave your final answer, like the square root of 40, your teacher will take points off. It's very much like leaving your fraction. Let's say you had a fraction answer and it was like 500 over 1,000, okay? You never want to do that in math. It's not like optional. Your teacher's not going to be like, oh, wow, I just see that you just didn't want to finish this problem and write this as one half, okay? So in math, you don't want to leave uh, values, okay, whether they are a fraction or a square root, unsimplified. You always want to fully simplify it. It's really not, not like a uh, optional thing. But if you knew this already, you're like, yes, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you're telling me stuff I already know. Well, let's celebrate your knowledge of square roots by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that indeed you understand how to simplify square roots using this property here and knowledge of what we call perfect squares. So let's go ahead and get into this right now. This is not going to be that difficult of an example, but uh, this is something that you definitely want to practice. All right, so here is our uh, problem, the square root of 40. Now, we don't know yet. Uh, let's just say you had this problem on a test quiz homework. You don't know, in fact, whether you can uh, simplify this, okay? However, if you can, what you need to be thinking about is this property again, okay? Now, this property states that when we take the square root of a number, okay, like the square root of 40, if we find factors of that number, i.e. here, the uh, rule is uh, factors are A times B, so those are two or more numbers such that you multiply them together, you get back to this value, right? So by taking the square root uh, and we're looking at the factors of a particular value, we can actually um, write it this way, the square root of one factor times the square root of another factor. And of course, you could have more than two factors, but this is a very, very uh, powerful property of square roots, and it's one of other properties you need to know about. Okay, so this is really, really important stuff. So this is the first thing um, 
that you need to be aware of to do this problem. Now, the second thing you need to be aware of is something called perfect square factors, okay? So what are perfect squares? Well, here are some right here. So 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, these types of, uh, type of numbers are called perfect squares because when we take the square root of these numbers, like the square root of 4, we get these lovely, perfect, nice little whole numbers like this. So the square root of 4 is 2, square root of 9 is 3, square root of 16 is 4, and so on. So the objective is we want to look for perfect squares, okay? These numbers here, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, and of course there's an infinite amount. We want to see if there's any of these type of numbers as factors, okay, in a particular value, in a particular square root. Because if there um, are perfect square factors, then we can simplify um, a square root. So let's go ahead and see how this all works right now. But uh, before we do, if you're getting some sort of value out of my, uh, my math content, I would really appreciate it if you uh, subscribe. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much. But uh, for those of you that are like, yeah, maybe, okay, you know what? Just hit that subscribe button and that notification button. It really helps me more than you think. Okay, so back to the problem. So here we have the square root of 40. Okay, now you're thinking to yourself, all right, that uh, YouTube math guy, he was telling me to look for perfect squares. So you're thinking about two or more numbers that when you multiply them together, you're going to get back to 40, i.e. factors, right? So if you look at 40, you're like, okay, well, 1 times 40, those are factors. But guess what? Those are not perfect squares, right? How about 2 times 20? Well, those are factors too, but they're not perfect squares. How about 4 times 10? Yes, indeed, we hit the jackpot because 4 is a perfect square. So it's not just any factor. It's perfect square factors we're looking for. So we could think of 40 as 4 times 10. So now let's go ahead and actually put this together. So here, the square root of 40 is equal to the square root of 4 times 10. These are the factors of 40. Okay, this is one way I can do it, but I want to do it in this specific way because I have this lovely square, uh, perfect square factor right here. Now, at this point, I can break up this big square root into two individual square roots. So, uh, so the square root of 4 times 10, I can write this as the square root of 4 times the square root of 10, and the value of doing that is now I could take the square root of 4, which of course is 2, so this is going to be 2 times the square root of 10, and this is the final answer. Okay, so simplifying square roots and radicals, this is not an optional thing. You must know how to do this in algebra, okay? And uh, all of you out there can learn whatever uh, math skill you want. You just have to take it one step at uh, one step at a time, okay? So you just don't want to, you know, start with difficult problems. Let's say you are working on this. You're like, okay, I get that. Uh, what you have to do is practice. Start with the easy problems first, then you work your way up. You know, it's like anything else, uh, you know, when you develop a skill like in sports or in music, you know, it takes practice, right? So it's one thing to watch me uh, you know, solve a math problem. It's a whole other thing to see if you can actually do it. So you gotta practice, practice, practice. So uh, for those of you out there that want more help on square roots, radicals, and the like, check out uh, my pre-algebra or algebra one course. You can find links to those in the description of this video. Also, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel. But uh, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.